believe it or not, functions. This next example, it has a lot of decimals. It looks kind of complicated. We could solve it with graphing with technology, but again, if you don't have access to technology, you need methods that will be foolproof, that will always work no matter what type of quadratic equation you're given. And the last method does just that. It's called the quadratic formula, which you may have heard of before. I'm going to scroll down first and take a look at this quadratic formula. It says that if you have a quadratic equation in standard form, you can simply take the opposite of b, add or subtract the square root of b squared minus the product of 4a and c, and divide that by twice a, and you will get two answers. Unless, of course, what's under the radical equals zero, then we'll only get one answer, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. You might wonder what this little story is that I kind of scrolled past. This is a great way to remember the quadratic formula so you don't have to constantly look it up and try to access it. The negative boy couldn't decide whether or not to go to the radical party. The boy was square and was turned down by four awesome chicks. And the party was all over by 2 a.m. That is our quadratic formula. Once you know what a, b, and c equal, you simply plug them in, use your knowledge of working with radicals, and simplify. Some of you may have used the quadratic formula in Algebra 1, so hopefully some of this will be review. The easiest mistake people make is they forget to set it equal to zero. x squared plus 45x plus 200 equals zero. If you don't do that and you just grab your coefficients and start plugging them in, you might have a wrong sign. a equals 1, b equals 45, c equals 200 in this example. So we're going to go ahead into our formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, get in the habit of putting that in parentheses in case b is negative, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, which is just 2. Next we need to simplify. And we're going to start by simplifying what's under the radical. We can use our calculator for this. We can do 45 squared, which is 2,025. We can also do 4 times 1 times 200, which is 800. And we're subtracting that. So what's inside the radical ends up being 1225. So negative 45 plus or minus the square root 1225 all over 2. Let's try to take the square root of 1225. Oh great, it's 35. That makes things much nicer for us. Negative 45 plus or minus 35 divided by 2. At this point, we are ready to break into our two solutions. Negative 45 plus 35 divided by 2. Negative 45 minus 35 divided by 2. Right here, we have negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5. Right here, we end up with negative 80 divided by 2, which is negative 40. Those are our two answers, our two solutions. In the next example, again, the hardest part is getting it into standard form so we can easily see what a, b, and c equal. I moved the 7x over, it became positive. I moved the negative 4 
over, it joined negative 9 and became negative 5. Pause the video and go ahead and try and see what you get when you use the quadratic formula for this example. Were you feeling frustrated with this one because you couldn't get it to simplify as nicely as the first one? Sometimes that happens. And the best thing to do is to just verify that everything is accurate. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. When I simplify, 20 times 4 is positive 80. Adding that to the 49, which was 7 squared, I get 129. I can't take the square root of 129. This is considered simplest form. This is our answer in simplest form. The only thing that we could possibly do at this point, if it was an actual word problem, would be to figure out this answer to the nearest hundredth or nearest thousandth. So let's try that because normally we would like to keep our answer very precise and we would just like, circle this as our answer. But if this were a word problem, we would want to figure out how much is this approximately? What are we talking about? So that would give us one answer, which would be 0 0.545. Now, I don't feel like typing that entire thing again, so I'll press second, enter to pull it up, and I'll just go back and I'll edit by making that a subtract. So add radical 129, subtract radical 129. Then we get negative 2.295. So those are our approximate solutions, but those have been rounded. If it asks for the simplest answer, you could just leave it in radical form. So this number under the radical is called the discriminant. Everything under the radical is the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. In our first example, it was 45 squared minus 4 times 1 times 200. In our second example, it was 49 minus 4 times 4 times negative 5. This is the discriminant of the quadratic formula. It is literally b squared minus 4 times ac. That is our discriminant. And we look at this discriminant and compare it to 0. Sometimes the discriminant is bigger than 0 or positive, like it was in both of our examples we've done so far. Sometimes the discriminant is going to equal zero. And finally, sometimes the discriminant will be negative, it will be less than zero. When the discriminant is negative, think about what that means. A negative number under the radical, that's going to be an imaginary number or complex number. It's where we have no real solutions. Our graph does not cross the x-axis anywhere. So it only has two imaginary solutions. If that number under the radical equals zero, let's think of an example what that would look like. Maybe our problem starts off negative seven plus or minus the square root of zero over 2 times a, which ends up being 6. I'm just making these numbers up. Notice if the number under the radical is 0, we are adding and subtracting 0. So negative 7 plus 0 over 6 and negative 7 minus 0 over 6. We get the same double root. And that happens, as you know, when our graph just touches the x-axis, we're going to have one rational root. And finally, the third thing to consider is when the discriminant is positive. If it is a perfect square, the number under the radical, when that is a perfect square, we get two real rational roots. 
rational meaning, not a repeating decimal that goes on forever. When that is not a perfect square, we get two real irrational roots. So again, let's look at the two examples we've done so far. The discriminant was positive in both examples. In the first example, it was a perfect square. It was 35 squared. So we got two really nice looking rational solutions. In the second example, the discriminant was not a perfect square. It was 129. We got two irrational real solutions that we had to round in order to use. When we're doing problems like this, even without finding the answers, we can just look at that discriminant and decide how many answers we can expect and the type of answers that we can expect. So in summary, when we're trying to solve quadratic equations, graphing can be helpful, especially if you get some nice integer solutions. But other times, graphing will fail us without the aid of technology. And when that happens, we have to turn to other solutions like factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Notice that completing the square and quadratic formula always work. No matter what type of quadratic you've been given. Not all quadratics are factorable though, so not all of them can be solved by factoring. Additionally, we didn't really include the square root property on its own, we kind of lumped it in with completing the square. But if you do not have an equation where you have a perfect square equal to a constant, the square root property will not work for you either. So it's important to know all of the techniques that you can use to solve quadratics so that you can be prepared given the different quadratic functions you will encounter.